Hello, in this video I'm going to cover the store configuration. That's basically the setup for the shopping cart for your website to allow people to place orders. So over in the left navigation we're going to expand on the store section, click on the configuration drop down, and we're going to go to store configuration here first. And there's a few toggle options you have. Do you want to require that the shipping and billing address be the same for orders? Will you accept freight forwarder addresses? Promotion codes enabled? That would be uh, if you create promotion codes for your customers at the checkout, there's a field where you can enter the code and it would take the discount you apply to that code off of their subtotal at checkout. So if you toggle that to no, that field will disappear on the checkout page. We also have the automatically exclude discontinued items. So with that toggled to yes, the system will automatically exclude any discontinued products out of the catalogs. If you make any changes, just need to save when you're done. Now we'll move on to payment methods. And we have different options here, one being credit cards. So if we check the box for credit cards, then you would just check off which credit cards you're going to accept at checkout. You can also integrate a PayPal account. Each business PayPal account has its own unique API credentials. So you need to plug in the email address tied to your PayPal account. Then you would toggle the API credentials. And you actually get those within your PayPal account. There's even a help document you can pull up. And if we browse by topic, and go to PayPal. It'll walk you through these steps, but basically you would have your PayPal account up in one window, this command center up in another, and you would copy and paste the API credentials from your PayPal account into the command center, hit verify when you're done, and then we have two options, automatic. You would choose that option if you're never going to adjust the shipping rates or add or remove light items from the order, and the uh, payment will be automatically transferred to your PayPal account, but if you go with manual, it would give you a chance to be able to edit the order before capturing those funds. You also have a purchase order option. And you could also give people the option to pay in store. So they could place an order, not give you any payment details, and then pay for it once they come in and get it. But that would allow, also allow for the potential for people to place orders and never come in and pick up that item. So when you're done with those changes, of course, you're going to save when you're done. Now we're going to move on to delivery methods and rates. So here we can check off if you're going to enable store pickup or not. And then if you're going to allow for items to be shipped, you'd be checking off whatever shipping agencies that you're going to use. So that's the first step. Now I'm going to click on edit shipping rates and we get a drop down selector with the options that we have enabled up above. So I'm going to toggle the to store pickup first. That's active. That's all we have to do for store pickup is to make sure it's active. Now I'm going to toggle to UPS, and UPS has different options. At the very least, you would probably enable ground residential. And once you mark a method active, you have to go in and edit and set up a flat rate shipping cost table. So the shipping rates are not going to be calculated by weight and where it's going. They'll be calculated by the order amount or how much is in the shopping cart combined with the shipping table that we build out here by adding limits and rates. I'm going to put in a few examples here. I'm going to set the first limit at $25. So our orders from zero to $25 is going to be a flat rate, and I'm going to have that be $6.95. Now I'm going to click on Add Rate, and that's going to give us our first tier on the shipping table. Now I'm going to set the next limit at 50. So I'll orders from 
2501 to 50, again, will have a flat rate, and I'm going to have that be 895. Now I'm going to add a few others here to go on. You can set up free shipping on orders over a certain amount. So let's say you want to do free shipping on orders over $100. So you would go up to 100 with limits and rates, and then toggle from order amount range to orders over set limits. That limit field is going to disappear. In the rate field, we would type in zero and hit add rate. So that would be free shipping on orders over $100. But I'm going to delete that out and keep building a flat rate table here. And you can set these limits and rates at whatever you want. These are just examples that I'm using here. Actually, I'm going to set up free shipping on orders over 500 and leave it at that. So again, I'm going to go up to 500 with my limits and rates, toggle from order amount range to orders over set limits, plug in that zero rate. So with this example, I've set up free shipping on orders over 500. And you can always delete those limits and rates out and re-add them. Now I'm going to move on to allowed countries. I have United States on the selected list. I'm just going to worry about orders from people in the U.S. Now I'm going to toggle to configure regions. We need to have the state that your store is located in on the selected list. And now we're going to move on to regional and city taxes. So 6.875 is what I want, but if that needed to be updated, you could click into this effective tax rate field, type in whatever you need it to be, and hit save. So whatever's in that effective field, that's what's going to calculate on the orders when the customer's in the same state as you. Thank you for your time.